Hi everyone, welcome to this video looking how to write the perfect formal letter in 2023. So there's been a few changes recently, so I'm going to talk about those to get you your grade 9 or whatever you're looking for. So this is EDUCAST, but you can do it for any exam board. So the exam is about two hours and one hour of each will be the writing and the reading. Like I say, we're looking at the paper to non-fiction writing exam. These are the six text types you can get. You need to do two of those in an hour and you look at it 300 to 400 words or page and a half to two pages of average size handwriting. So just looking at what people did wrong in November. So this is good if you've got a grade three in November or if you're someone who's on that borderline of common mistakes students make. So the things that the examiner says, so remember the examiner is the people who make the exam paper and mark the exam papers. They said answers were too short. So you need to write a lead page and a half. If it was, if you do less than a page, you've got no chance of getting a good grade. There was no planning. People were missing out questions. So if there's, if there's two writing questions worth 20 marks and you miss out one of them, or do like three lines of one of them, you're only going to get like one out of 20. And uh, the examiner tip would be to check for errors at the end of the exam for SPAG. So exam strategies, if you follow these four, I guarantee you're going to do well in the exam. You need to do a five point plan. You need to write a great intro. You need to use dress, which is stylistic features, and you need to proofread basic SPAG. So in other words, the stuff the examiner is telling us to do. Everything is very similar in the six text types here. The six text types, they're all very similar. We're going to use the same techniques. The only real difference, as I would say, was how the page looks. So for example, in an article review and leaflet, you'd have a heading and subheadings and a speech you don't. And formality, tone. So I would say the top two are going to be formal and the other four can be very, uh, not very informal, but quite informal. Normally the bottom four as well will be aimed at your class or your or your group or your peers. Well, the letter and report are probably uh, written for people, older people or people in positions of power. OK, so this question will be looking at how to write the perfect formal letter. The theme is going to be festivals. Festivals does seem to come up a little bit. So maybe like a music festival for and against. So that's why we're looking at this. So the question we're looking at in this video is an article in the Daily Echo newspaper said festivals are a waste of time. Write a letter to the Daily Echo, either supporting or opposing this view. And like all the writing questions, it's worth 20 marks. So this is one of those questions that comes up quite a lot that before you do anything, You've got to decide whether you're for or against the question. My advice would never be to be middling, to be in the middle ground. So it's fine if you want to do two points for, one point that is against. However, in your intro, never say something like, I, I can see both sides of the, the idea. Yeah. So in your in your intro and your conclusion, be really positive or really negative about the subject. So letter structure. First of all, you might notice there's no addresses. You don't need to do addresses in your letter now in the exam in 2023. It's a waste of time. The examiner wants to see your writing. They don't want you spending five minutes putting one address on the right and then one address on the left. So say hello, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So you've got your intro, conclusion, and three main points. Again, like all the other ones, it doesn't matter if it's a review, article, report, always the same. Intro, conclusion, three main points, and then say goodbye at the end. So in one of the changes we're going to talk about is should you use sir or madam in a formal letter in 2023? Probably not. No, you shouldn't use. So why do you think? Well, there's two reasons we really. The first reason is actually dear sir or madam now is outdated. It's old fashioned and it's probably overly formal. Like can you if you get a letter through the post, does it ever say dear sir or madam anymore? Probably not. I'm not saying you'd get marked down for it, but I wouldn't say it matches the formality of what we're looking for. And probably the second most um, sort of current um reason for not using dear sir or madam is it's not gender inclusive um, so the problem with this formula of dear sir or madam is that a non-binary person may not identify with it so or might identify with them so what do you write instead so the two easy ways around it are really putting the dear job title of the person so dear manager editor principal or dear company so dear daily echo dear sky dear apple whatever so there are two things so this was my question the National Lottery are giving money for school improvements. One school in your area will be chosen to receive the funding. Write a letter to the National Lottery persuading your school to dare to be chosen. We wouldn't put dear Sarah Madam, we'd put 
Dear National Lottery. If it was our question, an article in the Daily Echo said festivals are a waste of time, write a letter to the Daily Echo either supporting or opposing this view. Again, we're not putting Dear Sir and Madam, we're putting Dear Daily Echo. Or you could put something like Dear Editor. So ending your formal letter. So because we're not using names, it will never say in the GCSE exam, write to Mrs. Smith or Mr. Jones or Mr. Green, whatever. It will always be a company. We've just talked about we're going to use the company or the job title. So that means you're always ending with yours faithfully. You never have to use yours sincerely. Remember, the F of faithfully is never a capital and you've always got to have a comma after. Uh, faithfully. And remember, then end it. So don't just put your first name. So for example, your name was Lily phoenix you would put lily phoenix you wouldn't just put lily okay so of our five uh, four tips we're going to do let's look at a plan first you must know what you're going to discuss before you start writing so our questions about festival you've got to plan what you're going to say it's the main reason is it's very very obvious when someone doesn't plan it goes all over the place you have one paragraph so that's 10 sentences one that's two doing a plan will really help you will also get a mark for your plan this is the example plan for all questions not just the letter like i said before intro conclusion three main points try to make your intro conclusion a couple of sentences and your three main points five to ten sentences Again, your plan goes on your answer page like this. It doesn't go on your question paper. The question paper gets chucked in the bin. We want the examiners to see you've done a plan. So this was the question. A newspaper article has appear, appeared suggesting some people say they'd be better off about the internet. Do you agree? So is the internet a good or a bad thing? So my plan would be, I'm going to say in my intro and conclusion, yeah, the internet is really good. That's my side of the argument. And then my three things I'm going to talk about are going to be social media, online shopping and entertainment. So if I put that at the top of my page, I know exactly what I was doing. I could almost tick off each part. And it also shows the examiner what I was going to do if, for example, I don't finish. But doing that plan at the top of your page would really impress the examiner and more importantly, give you the structure you really need to do well in the exam. If it was our question... What you would do is, you'd first of all, you'd think, am I going to be for or against festivals? And then try to come up with three good things about festivals. So what I did in my class with my students, I said, see if you can think of four good things and two negative things. And then after that, decide which of those three things you think you could write the most about. So pretty obviously for a festival, um, one of the main things is music. So if you're a music fan, there's lots of people to see. You can see lots of different people. Another positive thing about festivals could be memorable moments. So it's not just about the music. It's about, feel free to pause all this if you want to. Uh, it's, it's about the camping. It's having a drink with friends. It's all the fun you'd get up to. Uh, another good thing about festivals is you can go with old friends and maybe make new friends. Uh, dressing up. So at least one of the days of a festival is a dressing up day. So if that's your kind of thing, you might like it. You don't get judged for doing it at a festival because everyone's doing it. And maybe food and drink from around the world. So at Glastonbury, for example, they have over 400 food stalls from food from all over the world. Like I say, if you want to pause, if you actually want to do this question, have a pause and have a read if you want to. Bad things maybe. If camping's your not idea of fun, it could be bad for you. There's a lot of waste at festivals. So what I would do then is pick three of the things, that, the positive things. And basically pick the three that you feel like you can write the most about. The ones I'm going to pick are going to be music socialize with old friends and meet new friends and the food and the drink and the stalls so in my intro i'm going to say uh, i've been asked to write a letter about festivals about festivals i'm going to i think they're amazing and i would do the same in my conclusion and then i would write five to six sentences about music friends and the food and drink remember if you've got something like food and drink and stalls they could all be put into one paragraph really couldn't they OK, so again, this is going to help me write the festival. OK, and again, this is my letter structure. But now I've got my intro and conclusion. Now I'm going to do that's my music paragraph. That's my paragraph about friends. And that's my paragraph about the food and the drink and the stalls. OK, so we've done our plan. Now moving on to a great intro. So a lot of people struggle to get going. But after they get going, they're fine. But just starting it, people seem to struggle. The main thing that people do wrong is they write about their reasons. So, for example, the good things about festivals, they write about them all in their intro. You don't do that in your intro. Your intro is just stating what you're going to say. So tips for writing intro. No more than two sentences. In the first sentence, you can use the exam question for help or copy a little bit of the exam question. And in the 
in, and then the third point is in the second sentence say which side that you're arguing you're on but not your reasons so you wouldn't say in your intro uh, about the festivals that you want to talk about the food that would be for later on in your thing so if we go back to that question about the internet is the internet good or bad here's an example intro I put, dear editor, in your newspaper, a number of people said that we're better off about the internet. I'm going to explain why I love the web. So I've got my red part where I've put a number of people said we'd be better off at the internet. If you look at the top of the screen now, you'll see I've literally copied that out from the exam question. So that's my first sentence, what my, what my question's about. And in my second sentence, I'm going to give my side of the argument. And my side of the argument is I think the internet is fantastic. OK, if another question you had was write a speech to your class with the following title, My Dream Holiday. This is an example of a bad intro where they've put, hi, everyone. I'm here today to talk to you about my dream holiday. My ideal destination is Hawaii and I would like to go there soon. I like the weather and I want to meet the local people. There is lots to do there. That is bad because they started talking about the reason in their intro and really briefly. The things about the weather and meeting the local people, they're fine as points, but they should be one paragraph each. They shouldn't just be squeezed in. So a really boring intro, but one that would be much better would be, hi everyone, I'm here today to talk about my dream holiday. My ideal destination is, is Hawaii. So in my yellow, I've got the exam question, and in my blue, I've got my side of the argument that I'm gonna talk about Hawaii. Again, this is a really simple intro, Bit of a boring one we can do better than that if it was our question about daily echo i've put dear daily echo recently i read in your article in your newspapers that said festivals are a waste of time in this letter i'll give you three reasons why i love music festivals so i've got dear daily echo because i'm not starting with dear sarah madam i've got the blue part which is i've taken my first sentence is taken from the exam question and in my second sentence I've said what side of the argument I'm on, that I think festivals are really good. Again, I, this is a nice basic one. We can do better. A way to push your grade up in an intro would be to try to use dress. So direct address, rhetorical questions, emotive language, statistics and sentence starters. So I've put Dear Daily Echo and I'm only changing my first sentence. I have put who doesn't love a great time? So I've got a rhetorical question. I've got 92% of people said they returned to Glasgow in 2023. Got a statistic and then in the last one i put the opinion stated about festivals in your newspaper is outrageous so i've got a motive language or exciting adjective so doing that maybe is a good way of pushing your grade up by using stylistic features okay so talking about dress so this is showing off to the examiner uh, this will definitely get your grades up because remember your letter has to be entertaining and interesting and remember that is what dress is pause the video if you like again pause the video if you want to you're not too sure about the various techniques Again, a really easy way to bump up your grade is by using sentence starters. So at a grade four or five level, just using firstly, secondly, and thirdly for your main paragraph, definitely push your marks up. If you're really trying to push yourself up the grades, then in the middle of your paragraph, try to use sentence starters like in contrast, fortunately, seriously, and so on. So we're talking about festivals. Really, remember, you can make up statistics. The, the examiner's marking your knowledge, not your knowledge of Glastonbury, but your English. So there are 400 food stalls across the festival site. Remember, the whole point of this letter is you're trying to persuade the reader that festivals are good. So these statistics are going to back up your point. So here's a paragraph that you can feel free to pause and read. It's quite a good example of a paragraph about why music is good at a festival. But what I'm trying to show you in this in this part of the video is that these are stylistic features that basically all the way through your writing, in particularly on central paragraphs, they should have dress and stylistic features all the way through them. So in my blue, I've got sentence starters. In my yellow, I've got exciting adjectives, amazing, fantastic, unmissable, special. In my green, I've got direct address using you and we. In my pinky purple, I've got a rhetorical question. And in my gray, I've got statistics. So I just wanted to show you just in a paragraph of 10 sentences, I've got three sentence starters, four or five exciting adjectives, five examples of direct address, a rhetorical question, two or three statistics. So this is what you should try to get your writing all the way through. You're using these persuasive writing devices to persuade the reader that festivals are a really good thing. OK, going on to the last exam strategy, which is the proofreading basic spag. Again, you've probably been told to proofread for years at school. I know it's boring, but you will definitely find three or four things that you can probably boost your grade up to. The main things I would say grade three students do wrong are these. You need to check your apostrophes. You need to check your homophones. 
particularly there, there and there, your and your, where and were, to and to, off and off. Again, you might, if you do these brilliantly, but just check it. Uh, capital letters. So I've noticed a lot with brands and names and countries and months. Make sure they've got a capital. No sentence is more than three lines without a full stop, which is a run on sentence, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And remember, if you're struggling for word count, use anecdotal writing. So use experiences from real life or you can make these up. So if you've been to a festival, talk about that. If you haven't been for a festival, you could talk about just made up that you've been to one last year and you really enjoyed it. Word count makes a big difference. So this is the same person, but on the question one, they got grade three. And on the question two, they got grade five. It's the same quality of work. The only difference is the word count. Like I said to you earlier, you need to get to a page and a half. You need to get to 300 to 400 words. Anything less than a page, you're not going to get a grade four. So even if you feel like you're waffling, you've got to try and get your word count up. Okay, so make sure you have a topic sentence at the start of each of your main paragraphs. So your central paragraph, try to make them short and simple. So what I mean by a topic sentence, it's basically almost like a title for your paragraph, telling the reader what the rest of the paragraph is going to be around. So again, if my central points are going to be about festivals or music, friends and food and drink, here are examples of some good uh, topic sentences. Music. Firstly, festivals are fantastic for my music. My paragraph about friends, I put, secondly, you will spend time with friends and make new ones. And the one about food, I put, thirdly, festivals are a great place to explore food from all over the world. So what I, the whole idea of a topic sentence, you make it really clear what the rest of the paragraph is going to be around. Never have a first line of your central paragraphs that are like two lines long. Really nice and short and snappy and make sure, make it very clear to the examiner what you're going to be talking about. And then you should also do the same with a closing sentence. So it restates the main idea of your paragraph. And how do you write one? We basically restate the main idea of your thing. So again, final sentences. So for example, here, if my paragraph is about, firstly, festivals are fantastic for our musical music. I'm going to end it. I'm going to, I'm going to then in between talk about all the stuff why music is brilliant at a festival. And I'm going to end it by saying, clearly, festivals are an amazing way to see live music. So it's almost like an intro and conclusion for a little paragraph. OK, so like I said to you, run on sentences are a big thing that people do wrong. I would say it's the biggest problem people do. If you're someone who does do it, I, I think your writing would go up one grade if you cut it out. So what is a run-on sentence? It's basically putting no full stop or putting a comma in where you've got two or three sentences. So you've got two or three sentences and you've just basically either put a comma in or you haven't put a full stop on. So this is a typical example. This is a, a recent question my students did on writing a leaflet about a tourist attraction. They did Bournemouth. So they've put Bournemouth has a great beach. It is seven miles wide. Bournemouth has a great beach, comma, it is seven miles wide. Bournemouth has a great beach, full stop, it, has seven, it is seven miles wide. So the bottom one is correct. So there's got to be something in there between beach and it. You can't just put nothing in there. The major mistake students do is they just put a comma in there. Don't do that. Either put a full stop or put a word like and or but or because. Again, he put on sunscreen, the sun was burning hot. He put on sunscreen, comma, the sun was burning hot. Both wrong. So you can either put something like he put on sunscreen full stop, the sun was burning hot, or he put on sunscreen as the sun was burning hot. So again, I, I realise you might think, oh, this is a bit babyish. I guarantee even students who get grade five and grade six do this. So if you don't do it, I guarantee your marks would go up really highly. OK. And again, an easy way of doing this is if you've got a sentence that goes on three or four lines, go in, find where the full stops needed and put it in. Here's a typical example. It's about five or six or six or seven lines long. The person's just put a comma in. Where I've put the emoji denotes where the full stop is. In this one, literally, that is one full stop. That is a whole sentence. This is what you need to be doing. So every line or every two or three lines, doesn't mean you can't have the odd long sentence, but no sentence is more than three lines. And this has got full stops all the way through it. Okay, so formal letter summary. Remember, don't put dear Sarah Madden, put dear job title or dear company. Five paragraphs, intro, conclusion, three main points. Try and persuade the reader to agree with you all the way through using dress. You're going to do a formal letter, but don't make it too formal. Use dress, direct address, rhetorical question, exciting adjectives, statistics, sentence starters. No address is needed. Just go straight in and proofread for common mistakes. OK, again, there's our structure. Say hello, say goodbye, intro, conclusion, three main points. 
Um, and there you go. Hope that's been really helpful for you. Um, in particular, SPAG, proofread your run on sentences, try and persuade the reader, and I'm sure you'll do very well in the exam.